What is up? I'm Marcel and welcome back to The Modern Filmmaker. In this DaVinci Resolve tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to take a soft shot and make it pop. So recently I got to color grade another video for Church of the City. Um, a lot of the shots look great, but some of them were a little soft, including this one right here. If I zoom in and deactivate the node tree, you can see that his face is pretty soft. And it's not just because I'm zoomed in, because uh, if you look a little closer, you'll notice that the focus is clearly on this mic stand uh, more so than it is his face. So uh, we've got to make this shot not only sharp again, but we've got to make it pop and completely seem in focus on where it's supposed to be in focus. So if I just go ahead and reactivate the node tree, right click and reset this grade, I'll pretty much go over this whole grade and exactly what I did to get it to that punchy look that I got it to. Uh, so if I just get rid of these clips and zoom back in so we can see what we're doing. Uh, and the first node, I'm going to use noise reduction because you're really not gonna get that far trying to push an image if there is noise all over the place. And if I add a node, and then add a little bit of contrast here in the curves, you can see there's quite a bit of noise in this image. So going back to the first node, if I go to our noise reduction, I'll go to the temporal noise reduction and go to frames and I'll go to three. Um, you can use one, uh, which will be less computer intensive and it'll probably be easier to play back if you just use one, but I like to use three. I found that it gives me a really good result uh, without overdoing it. And then I'll go to this faster, and faster is good. I like to use better. Um, now again, if your computer is, is more of a friend of the faster setting, that's completely understandable, uh, but I like to use better. And then down in the Luma and Chroma, I'm just gonna bump this up a little bit to uh, maybe about three, 3.4. Let's, let's slide somewhere in between with 3.2. And then in the spatial noise reduction, I'm gonna leave the mode and the radius right where they are come down here to spatial threshold. I'm gonna unlock uh, this lock tool here. That way I can use the uh, Luma and Chroma independently of each other and go to the Chroma noise and move this up because a lot of the time the noise is actually just in the colors, which would, would be the Chroma noise. And if I just move this up to maybe about 16, 14, now we're looking pretty good. And it looks a lot more like grain than it did like noise. If I deactivate, you can see that there's all kinds of colorful noise patterns in here. And by reactivating, now it looks a lot more grainy and less noisy, which is much more film-esque. I mean, film will have grain. It's just not this colorful, splotchy craziness that you usually get from uh, video, digital video cameras. Uh, and so if we reactivate the noise reduction and then we move on, I'll go in this next node and kind of accentuate a little bit more contrast in these curves. Uh, you can see in the scopes, we have a bit more room and I'll pull this high dot up a little bit and pull our shadows down a little bit more uh, because contrast, essentially that's what sharpening is. It's contrast, but on a smaller radius. So uh, any amount of contrast is gonna help your image pop a little more and definitely seem a little more sharp. Uh, and from there, we can move on to our next node. I'll create another node with Alt S and we'll create another serial node. And then from here, we'll actually start the sharpening of the face. And so I'm gonna go ahead and make a mask, a circular mask under the power windows. I'll hit this circular power window, move this up to his face. I'll tilt this to be more in line with his face and then I'll shrink this down uh, to really just kind of encapsulate just the face. And if you think about it, you know, focus is gonna work from front to back. So if the focus is on my eyes, then my ears may be slightly out of focus. Um, and the nose, eyes, mouth, the ears might be slightly out of focus if the stuff at the front of your face is in focus. So it's okay to make a little power window with some softness that kind of comes in on the face because if you think about it, you know, it, it's not gonna be perfectly real, uh, but that's okay. It'll be definitely more realistic if we kind of use the softness to gradient the sharpness towards just the front of the face, falling off uh, towards the top, uh, top of the hat and the side of the face, the bottom of the chin. Uh, so we can move this up, maybe shrink it down just a little bit. And then we can hit the highlight button to see what section we've got covered. And that looks good. Now in this situation, what's behind him is already out of focus. So even if I do sh 
catch a little bit of the background in this power window. It's not really going to sharpen that background because it's it's out of focus. It's beyond the radius that we're going to choose to sharpen. And, and if you don't understand that now, uh, you'll understand in just a moment. So if I go over to the blur sharpen section, hit the blur button and then go to sharpen. Now I can take this radius uh, or take the scaling and move. I can take the scaling from here and move this down to about 24. 25 isn't bad, which is where it usually starts, but I'm gonna go down to 24 and then use the radius and pull this down to about 48. That's 46, let's see, 48 uh, almost isn't enough. Let's go to 47, split the difference there. And now we're already getting a little bit of a sharper look without overdoing it, which is the most important thing. We don't want to make this image fall apart. Uh, that's the last thing we want. Um, and I may do one thing. Before this node, I'm going to right click, hit add node, and add serial before. Um, I'm actually going to smoothen this image out just a little bit more uh, by going to our primaries wheels. And then in the midtone detail, I'm going to move this down to minus about minus 15, maybe minus 17. That works. Make this a little smoother of an image, as you see, which will help kind of blend together some of the pixels. That way, when we sharpen, it won't fall apart quite as easily. Uh, so from here, I'm going to go ahead and track his face. So in the track, uh, in our node with the mask, I'm going to go to the track section and then go ahead and track this backwards. And then I'll go forward and track this forward. Boom. Now we can go back to kind of our hero frame here and I'll hit Alt-S to make a new node. Now I'll go back to the power window and I'm gonna do the same exact thing over again. Uh, but instead of going back to the power windows, making another uh, circle, shrinking it down to his face, I'm actually going to, to this node before, hit Control-C to copy that, and hit Control-V on our blank node to copy over the attributes from the first sharpening node. Now in this first node, I'm gonna go ahead and reset our sharpening scaling and radius. Now, if I go back in on his face, I'm gonna take this scaling down to about 20. Now, this pretty much says the, the contrast space that you want to sharpen. So the smaller I get, so like if I'm, if I'm up here at 30, it might sharpen this, the rim around his ear, which is kind of a, a bigger section of contrast. Now, if I go down here to 20, uh, or even lower, it might just pick up these smaller strings. And that's actually a, a pretty good reference there. A bigger scaling radius would be like, I'm just trying to sharpen um, these bars on the fretboard, which are pretty thick bars. Now, if I wanna get down to these smaller strings, I'll have to make the scaling of the sharpening smaller. Uh, so I'll go down to 20, 19, let's go down to 19. That works for me. And then I'll go back up here to the face because in the face, it works the same. Uh, the last sharpening we did may have helped bring out the rim of the glasses, uh, the, the nostril, uh, the holes of his nostrils, um, things like that. But this smaller scaling will help with the beard hairs and little granular things on his face. So if I move this sharpening, uh, the radius up, uh, down to, let's say 48, 47 again, that looks, that's 45, that's a little overdone, but about 46 works. If I deactivate, activate, yeah, that's really nice because now you're seeing the reflection off his glasses a lot sharper. His eyes are actually more prominent, which really helps. And then another thing we can do while we're here is bump up the contrast of his face just a little bit. It's barely even noticeable, but just a little bit. And then maybe the mid-tone detail, maybe bump that up just a tad. And then if I were to deactivate this node, boom, it's like a whole different face. All from that one node. It's awesome. And if I were to deactivate the two sharpening nodes, now his face looks like a blurry mess. So uh, thank God we found a workaround in that situation. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and track this last mask that we made. I'll go ahead and track backwards. And then track forward. I think the tracking properties were already there because we copied them from the last node. But just in case, better to be safe than sorry. So let me make one more node with Alt S. And from here, I'm actually gonna go ahead and select, uh, make another power window around all of Chris, the guy that's singing in this video. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and make this a little bigger, about right there, boom. Yeah, that looks pretty good. 
And then from here, I'll go over to a softness and I'll soften this out. And then I'll come off the highlight and I'll come over to our sharpening tool again. I'll make this radius maybe around 22. And then from there, I will sharpen probably down to 48. Nothing crazy, just a little more sharpening. And you can definitely see it in his glasses. You can see it on his shirt a little bit. That's off, that's on. See that off, on, off, on. Definitely see it. Yeah, that's nice. And at full screen, that looks really, really good. And if I were to come back, deactivate that last node, deactivate all the nodes, and then reactivate. That looks pretty, pretty good. So another thing I'm going to do just to make him pop a little bit more is come over to the curves and push a little bit more highlights in to him and a little more contrast overall by bringing these shadows down just a little bit. Uh, not too far. I might come further down the spectrum about right there. Boom. Now he kind of solely pops and you wouldn't even really know it if you didn't see me do it. It's like now that you're seeing the before and after, you might notice it, but you really definitely would not notice this kind of thing if you were just watching the video. Looks really, really good. And then I'll make one more node and maybe, okay. And then I'll hit the highlight button and I'm gonna qualify just the highlights. So if I go to the qualifier, raise up the luminance to where I'm just getting kind of the highlights of his face and hands here. Then I can come to the L soft, which is the low soft, soften up that qualify and maybe a little bit further up and a little less on the softness. It's tough because you do not want to get this granular, you don't want to get too much granular uh, look in here. You really want it to be kind of a smoother roll off if you can. And then I'll take the denoise and I'll bump this up a little bit just to smooth out those granules in there. Then click off the highlight button Go to the primaries, bars, and I'll raise the gain just a little for a little extra pop. See that? Deactivate, activate. It's almost like there's a light there hitting a highlight on them that wasn't even there to begin with. Super sick. That's one of my favorite tactics. You guys have seen me use that one before for sure. So now if I do the whole thing before and after, now we are really, really popping. If I take away this last one, if I just take away these last four, actually, you can see that we are looking at a much flatter, much less dynamic image. And now with just those four nodes, we've taken this whole image to a whole new spot. Love that. That looks awesome. And then one last thing I'll do Alt S is add a little glow in here just to give it a little bit more magic. So if I go to the glow, the open effects glow, pull this onto this last node, I'll come down to the comp composite type and come down to soft light, go up to the shine threshold. I'll move this all the way down to zero. And then in the opacity, because it's a little overkill right now, in the opacity, I'll kind of bring this all the way down and then I'll start working it up to see kind of where it feels natural boom that looks good it's not that much but look at the difference it makes if i deactivate and activate deactivate activate it really smoothens out the image um adds just that little bit more finesse that you just didn't have otherwise so if i deactivate all of these nodes and kind of go one by one we have the noise reduction then a little bit of contrast then we added our mid, we, we minus the midtone details to get a little bit more softness, uh, oddly enough, even though we're trying to sharpen this. And then we did our first sharpened layer of the face, second, which really made a huge difference on that second sharpened layer with the extra contrast and extra midtone details. Then a little bit more pop just on him. Then we did our highlights, which really made things pop, and then our glow. 
And that right there is how you take a soft shot and make it pop. So I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, make sure to click the like button. I mean, I'm telling you, it'll make you feel different. And if you didn't like the video, make sure to click the like button anyway. It'll really help me out. And of course, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave them in the comment section down below. I try to always reply. Definitely make sure to subscribe if you like videos on DaVinci Resolve and videography overall. And as always, I'm Marcel, and this has been The Modern Filmmaker. I'll see y'all next time. Peace.